Today I've got a really nice integral from our favorite problem suggester that looks kind of impossible to solve at first, but will actually be solved fairly quickly if we just kind of follow our nose with a standard substitution and then see where it goes. So let's see what we have. We want to find the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 3 of the natural log of sine of x plus cosecant squared of x over cotangent of x plus natural log of sine of x. Generally, when you've got some sort of integral that involves a numerator and a denominator, it's not a terrible idea to make a substitution where the denominator is playing the role of our new function. And that's exactly what we'll do here. And some other things pointing us towards that are the fact that the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant. So perhaps not the derivative of the entire denominator is the numerator, but at least we kind of get off to a good start. All right, so anyway, let's set, do what I just suggested. We'll set the denominator equal to a new function, which I'll call f of x. That is the cotangent of x plus the natural log of sine of x. Now let's see what the derivative of that function is. So the derivative will be negative cosecant squared of x plus, so the derivative of the natural log of sine, so that'll be 1 over sine times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So that's cosine over sine, which is cotangent. So I used the chain rule there. All right, so now we've got those two pieces kind of at the ready. Now, can we somehow produce the numerator using these two pieces? And in fact, we can. Notice if we take f and we subtract f prime, we get the numerator. So let's maybe that make that a little observation down here. So let's note that the numerator, so I'll just write numerator equals f of x minus f prime of x. So let's see what that does for our integral. Now we can rewrite this as the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 3 of f of x minus f prime of x over f of x dx. Great. Now where should we go from here? Well, notice if we have f of x over f of x, that's just 1. If we have f prime of x over f of x, that's like some sort of natural log, keeping in mind the chain rule. So that gives us motivation to split this into two fractions. So let's do that. So we've got the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 3 of 1 minus f prime of x over f of x, and then dx. Now each of these are easily integrable. So the number one integrates out to x. We evaluate that at pi over three and pi over four and subtract. Well, pi over three minus pi over four is pi over 12. So I'll just write that here. So we have pi over 12. And then from there, we have to subtract the natural log of the absolute value of f of x, where we evaluate that from pi over four to pi over three. Again, keep in mind that if we take the derivative of the natural log of f of x, we get f in the denominator and f prime in the numerator, again, by the chain rule. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So we have pi over 12, and then that'll be plus the natural log of f of x evaluated at pi over 4, where I'm kind of using this minus sign to flip the order of evaluation. So let's see, f of x evaluated at pi over 4, that shouldn't be too hard. So that gives us cotangent of pi over 4, but cotangent is cosine over sine, but cosine and sine are both square root of 2 over 2 at pi over 4, so that gives us 1. So that's the value of cotangent plus the natural log of sine, but that'll be plus the natural log of 1 over root 2. Just keeping in mind that that 1 over root 2 is the value of sine at pi over 4. 
Okay, and then we need to subtract off the natural log of this f of x evaluated at pi over three. So let's see, cotangent evaluated at pi over three, it turns out that it's one over the square root of three. So that's because the cosine function at pi over three is a half, and the sine function is square root of three over two, so that's how that simplifies. And then we have plus natural log of sine evaluated at pi over three, but that's gonna be the natural log of the square root of three over two. And I guess there's one more thing we could do. We could use natural logarithm rules to put these two terms together, so let's do that. And there we've got it. I think that's a nice form for this final answer. We have pi over 12, then we have the natural log of one plus natural log of one over root two over one over root three plus natural log of root three over two. And that's a good place to stop.